Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode. 151. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another co-hosted episode with Joe Casey. Now, this week, we're going to talk all about top 10 business books that have changed our lives and our business. So we discuss at which point in our business we discovered these books and how they helped us. We also share whether we think each title is best to get in paperback format, so you can use it as reference to take notes and come back to it again and again, or if it's okay to get it as an ebook, just so it's easier to read and carry around. So let us know what you think. Um, we each share our top ten, sorry, our top five business books together in week ten. I think a lot of these you will be familiar with. Perhaps people have recommended them to you over and over again, and you just haven't gotten around to getting them. Hope you find them useful, and let us know in the show notes, if we left anything off the list, and what you think should be on the list of top 10 favorite business books. Hello, this is Holly Wharton, and Joe Casey and I are back with another special episode of our podcast. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about our top 10 business books and how they've changed our lives in business. So we're each going to come to the table with five of our favorite business books, and we're going to have a chat about what it is that we've read, why we love it, and why we think they might be useful to you. So, hello, Joe. Hi. Hi, Holly. How are you? How's oh, your month been? It's been fabulous, and I'm very excited to talk to you again. Yeah, me too. These are always fun. These are always good, and they always I'm, get um, lots of responses on the, the – um, certainly in my Facebook group and on the, yeah. the times that I, sh- I share it. So, yeah, I think this will be yeah. a good one. Good, good. All right, so would you like to start with your first – and these don't, do you have them in order one through five or are they just random? No, they're, they're kind of random. But what yeah. I realized was that some of the books that I'm, I'm sharing, they tend, in fact, the majority of them tend to be ones that were were so kind of impactful on me earlier on in my business. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so in, in, in some ways they were not just kind of useful in terms of practical stuff. I think that the main effect that they had was they, they were quite inspirational not that mm-hmm. they're you know inspirational stories necessarily but they were they were the books that for me gave me a really clear message of you can do this keep going yeah excellent and so the f- the very first one that I have is uh, the Firestarter Sessions by Danielle Laporte I haven't read that one it's it's I can't think it's I don't know seven eight years old maybe so Danielle first started off uh when she kind of went into uh, her, her own business and the entrepreneurial world and she was doing kind of business coaching the fire starter sessions she called them and so she was she was doing you know kind of one off you could hire her for a strategy session the book came out of of that and it's a, a real kind of yeah kind of stoking the fires within you and saying you can totally do this here's some practical stuff here's how to approach things like fear and emotions and how they show up here's how to approach money and very much in that that kind of typical Danielle Laporte uh, kind of ways quite soulful very pragmatic kind of funny and it was one of those that was unlike any of the books that I'd been reading up until that point Mm. and I really took from it this is maybe doable. Maybe I can do this. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. Mm, good. So who would you recommend this for? What type of business owner would you recommend this for? I, w- I would say anyone. I think Danielle writes particularly well for women. I, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say men wouldn't enjoy it, but I think particularly well for women. And I, I think for if you're in the first few years of your business and you're still wondering if, you know, when you're, the shoe's going to drop and you're really going to find your feet with it, which, mm-hmm. by the way, I'm not sure ever fully happens. But, <laughs> but you know, when you're, yeah. you're in those kind of early couple of years and it's just like, I feel like I'm feeling my way and, and all of that. Th- this book is like having a really wise, sassy, smart older sister to kind of lead you through it and just kind of go, okay, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Excellent. Yeah. Mm. 
All right. So my first one, and again, these are in no particular order, is Denise Duffield Thomas's Get Rich Lucky Bitch. Now, this is a money mindset book, but it's very, very closely related to business because she talks a lot about her business in it and about money beliefs that relate to business. So it's not strictly a business book, but very, very much related because, of course, if it's not if you're not making money in your business, it's a hobby. Mm. So um, I really, really like this book because, first of all, I love Denise. I love her style. The book very much sounds like her speaking, and we can talk about that why in a minute. But it's just very kind of conversational, really helps you dig up your money stuff and the blocks that might be holding you back. And it, it really gives you kind of a clear process that you can go through to help both identify and release your money blocks. So love that book. And I love Denise. I, it's, I, I know so many people who rave about this book. And for some reason, I've, I've never read it. And I don't know why. I'm thinking this, <laughs> this should be on my list of, of things to read. Well, maybe the time hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> maybe. But you're right. The whole thing about money mm. is so loaded for so mm-hmm. many of us. Um, and those beliefs that we carry around about, you know, what is too much money, what's enough money, what's a reasonable amount to be charging, mm-hmm. all of that. I mean, they're the type of conversations that I have all day long with with my clients mm-hmm. and, you know, that happen in the the, the Facebook sphere and, and things like that. And so I, I, th- I think being able to uncover your money stuff is, is absolutely vital. Um, yes. So I'd be intrigued to, to read this book. So. You should give it a try. Mm. So I first got it as an ebook and read through the whole thing and really got lots of use out of it. But then I ended up going back and getting the paperback because it's the kind of book that it's good to have as a reference so you can just like flip through it and go to the different parts and kind of mm-hmm. use it as a reference book. So I'm really happy that I've got it in, the, in both formats. But now that I've got the paperback, I'm using it more in printed form. It, it's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, the whole explosion of digital books and, and mm-hmm. you know, I love my Kindle to death, but there is something about having it, particularly uh, like books that I'm learning stuff from rather than a novel. That would be nonfiction as I'm hearing my six-year-old in my, <laughs> in my head tell me. That's a nonfiction book, mommy. So for nonfiction books, I, I like to be able to you know, put kind of coloured stickies on, on mm-hmm. the, the pages that I want to go back to and underline and bits. And, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. Mm, okay. What's your next one? Well, I guess it's it's kind of r- related and to do with it's to do with money and it's called The Art of Earning by Tara Gentili mm. and this was another one of those pivotal books. I think I think similar to uh the the Denise DeField Thomas mm-hmm. uh, book for you in that uh, this is kind of Tara Gentili's almost manifesto for mm. us reframing our, our relationship with money. Mm-hmm. And it's I mean, she starts off working with creatives, so a lot of it is to, you know kind of aimed at artists and creatives. But it's it's about let's let's looking at money and the fact that making money can be beautiful, yes. you know, and it doesn't have to be something that's sleazy and it doesn't have to be exploitative. And there's a huge difference between um, you being able to charge a really decent amount for your art or for your coaching or for your services and hedge you know, a hedge fund manager who's asset stripping companies and doing horrible <laughs> things in the world. There is a huge difference. And yet we we can sometimes get those conflated. And mm. so it's, it, it really helped to start reframing my approach to, to money and help me get really okay with earning money in my business. Because mm. lots of us have a real fundamental problem, even with that you know, earning money in your business, being able to charge for your services, being able to charge an amount that may make you feel a bit uncomfortable at first because you have, you know, you have to be able to look at money more objectively about, well, this is what I, I need, this is what I want, and and take some of the morality out of money, I think. We have a lot of kind of toxic stuff and baggage that, that we carry around with money. Mm, definitely. And it can be hard to dig that stuff up because a lot of it goes way back and we're not even aware of it. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's it can really hold us back and, and, and trip us up. Mm. You know, whether it be you know something I see in coaching all the time is people charging so little for their services that they can't actually make a living even if they have a full practice. Yeah. That's um, sad. It is. It is really sad because money is your fuel. Mm, that's how you. That's how you survive. Yes. You've got to. 
Yeah, and I know pay your s- rent or your mortgage and yeah, eat. exactly. And you know, and then the idea. Well, how about if we got you out of survival, and so you were thriving, and you know, then that that's a whole other set of mindset stuff. It's like, mm. Ooh, you know, it, it seems somehow wrong, and and it's really such a pivotal thing being able to explore your own money stuff yeah um and i know we we talked about this before and i think it holds a lot of business owners back because they end up kind of either scrimping or trying to diy things that they would actually save themselves way more in in time and in money and in the ability to be able to serve more clients if they just bit the bullet and just invested and hired somebody to help them or hired a coach or but they they don't because they think they can't afford it and then Mm -hmm. they end up just you know charging saying you know 35 dollars for an hour's coaching session Mm -hmm. which is you know it it, it it's just not sustainable yeah, and not. it kind of breaks my heart when mm. when when that happens so yeah our approach to money and our our, our, our views on money so pivotal yeah. so important so the art of earning i read that a couple of years ago that's that's a fairly short book isn't yeah. it it's kind of like a one day motivational read oh yeah yeah and i got the um i think the version that i bought and i don't know if it's i think you can still get it on, on amazon but i i got it originally from uh, Tara's website was mm, you got too. the the audio companion with it and so oh, I would cool. I would listen to it as I was kind of doing my my kind of lunchtime walk when I was I was stuck in my my rather depressing day job at the time that I knew I was going to be get made redundant from mm-hmm. but there was like a year before I was made redundant so I had it a kind of the first six months of that year of me just being in total fear about what will happen when <laughs> you know, I don't have my day job and you know really obvious logical things like you could always get another job or you know things like that just weren't <laughs> penetrating my brain and so this book was real kind of solace for my soul about you know you could go and work for yourself and it could be beautiful you could make this work you could thrive through doing this and mm. yeah it, it, I, I think there's there's so much about you need the right teachers to be able to hear the message mm-hmm. but certainly for me T- Tara Gentilla was one of those earlier teachers so it's just like I just uh, it really resonated everything she said in this book to me mm, great mm. all right so my number two is pretty much anything by Kat Laterzo so she's got a series of short ebooks not sure how long they are might be around 20,000 words or so so they're really easy to digest it's like having your own personal cheerleader in your back pocket who gives you a kick in the butt as you <laughs> as you, you go about with your business day so she's got i just i love her personality i mean she's a personal trainer so that's her background that she comes from mm. before she you know came to the business world and so let's see let me take a look at a couple of the titles that i've got here on my ipad kindle app so we've got launch it uh it's called how to create launch and market your information product in two weeks or less um and again super motivational just great kind of straight talking no filters whatsoever um she's got another book how to journal and make shit happen passion purpose passion flow get aligned speak your truth and make millions being you that's a great one um what else do i have here by her i think there's another one a revolutionary fucking leader <laughs> This should give you an idea of her personality. A manifesto to quit being so vanilla, unleash greatness, and have it all. So so I love Kat. I think she's got a great personality. Her personality is very much infused into everything that she writes. And she's like a kick up the backside to help motivate you and get you going. But very much in like high energy personal trainer format. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, that that's my second. She's got a ton of different ebooks and she gives she's got them all for sale on Kindle at very reasonable prices. But she also gives one for free in PDF format every month on her website. So she rotates the different titles, but you can get one of those for free if you don't mind having a PDF rather than a Kindle book. So Oh right. Yeah. So how, how do you how do you spell her, her surname in case I mean uh, I will put it in the show notes? T Laterzo L O T E R Z O or Z O depending on what part of the world you're in. <laughs> yeah, so she is fantastic. Okay, I think I've read Launch It. Yeah, I, I like it. Project, yeah. She's just one of those people that's like super focused and clear on what she's doing and really structured with her day. And she's got two kids, you know, so it's mm. not like 
she has nothing else to do but her business, you know. She's she's got a family life to deal with and, you know. So, yeah, love her. Mm. And I, it's really interesting because you do need, I think, um, different styles and different tones for different mm. moods. Like there's sometimes I do want something a bit more intellectual, a bit more soulful, and I can spend time kind of unpacking the idea. And and then there are other times I just need to kick up the bum and somebody to say, go do the thing. Mm, exactly. Well, Kat is your woman for that. When you mm. need a kick, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check out her others. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So my, my next one. Um, and again, this was, this was another early one and it was, it's book yourself solid by Malcolm Mm -hmm. Port. And I think for anyone going into a service based business, I mean, it it must be what, 10, 15 years old now, this, this book. It's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah, But I, it's still absolutely relevant. It's packed full of really practical ways of I, I suppose the, the things that have kind of almost come to define the strategies in the, in the coaching business mm-hmm. and the other kind of, you know and consultancy and other service-based professionals really readable in fact there's now one for visual learners so there's one that's all in in picture form kind of almost Ooh. cartoon form yeah and um, there's an audio version of it which I, i'd really recommend it, it's great very practical very kind of reassuring kind of hold your hand through it but gives you some really um pragmatic things that you can do to put into action and i, I still refer back to it and refer my clients to it because i just think it's great mm, excellent mm. yeah I, I remember first coming across that when i was training as a coach mm. five years ago mm-hmm. and came highly recommended to me read through it loved it i think it's just a great great resource and i'm actually now that we've co- you know, brought this up in a conversation i feel like i should have a look through it again because i've got the paperback <laughs> right. so i can go through my notes and see uh, if there's anything else that i can get out of it and i'm sure there is yeah uh, I, every time i go back to it there's always something that i mean none of it's uh, i suppose once you've been around a little bit none of it's new but there's always stuff in there kind of go ah, i'm not really doing that enough at the moment so i, I could do a bit exactly. more of that and yeah really well well worth it and another one that is very reassuring and that it gave me that sense in the early days that i, I this looks doable i think mm. i can do this yeah whereas i think some of the the more traditional kind of businessy books mm-hmm would just way over my head or used intimidating yeah. language and you know right early on using things like you know sales funnels and how to bring in leads and, and things like that I had no clue what they were talking about no clue yeah and and so you know my, my fear hackles just just came up whereas things like book yourself solid it's in very reassuring language it talks in in real language you know <laughs> yes. it helps you to do everything from finding your niche to finding your ideal clients to finding best ways of getting out there to find those clients. It's, uh, yeah, very down to earth, I think. Mm, It is. And it's also, it's written for solopreneurs rather than, you know, corporate CEOs, Mm -hmm. which a lot of business books are. And so it's like, sometimes I go into the business section, I'll be like, oh, really fascinating. None of this really resonates with me, but I'm sure it's all very useful to someone else. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of business books. I mean, even in the entrepreneurial world, that are very kind of rah, energy. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. what I like about things like Book Yourself Solid is there's none of that. It's just kind of calm and just talks you through it and it's this, you know, uses humor and gives you a strategy that's very workable. In, in the real world, you don't need a ton of money to do it. Here are the steps. Here's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really important, especially when you're, you're starting out or you're still at that stage where it feels a bit like pushing a big rock up a hill. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You don't want anything that's going to make you read it and kind of go, I'm not cut out for this. Because <laughs> that voice in your head saying that anyway. You exactly, want exactly. Say, you don't need yeah. something else telling you that. Mm. All right. So my next one is Natalie Sisson's Suitcase Entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big fan of Natalie Sisson. I've been reading her stuff for a long time. Her podcast was the first podcast I ever listened to. And she inspired me to get into podcasting. So I love Natalie. And I love her style. I love her voice. I love just everything about her. So the suitcase entrepreneur is all about building an online business in a way that you can become a digital nomad, or even if you're not interested in living out of your suitcase as she did for so many years, 
having that ability to just pick up and do that mm. for a month or a few weeks if yeah. you feel the need to do so. So she gives you loads of really practical advice on how to start up a business, again, from the perspective of a solopreneur, not a massive mm. corporate of CEO type person. Mm. So really, really aligned, loads of links, great information, fantastic book, I think, for people who want to have that freedom, as Natalie says, freedom in business and adventure in life, um, who want to have a business that kind of lets them pick up and take it with them, mm. you know, again, for a month or a couple of weeks or whenever. You don't have to be a full-time traveler to get, you know, good use out of this book. Mm. So, Because I think, you know, freedom is one of my big values but I, I have two kids they're they're in school so mm. th- that to me doesn't always necessarily mean you know it'd be lovely to spend the, the summer somewhere it's nice and, and hot yeah but it also means that there are times when I say my daughter's sick mm-hmm. I can take her over to my parents and I can work from my parents house mm, exactly. and I can do calls there because you know I have my business set up so that you know actually I can work from any room in the house or any, yes. you know, <laughs> or anyone else's house or you know if we do go on vacation and stuff i remember you know we went to had a very rainy week in wales last year and <laughs> i was doing coaching course when my husband was stuck with two very grumpy kids oh. <laughs> not knowing what to do with them and i i could nip upstairs and go oh, i'm sorry i've got coaching calls to do <laughs> excellent yeah, yeah but i i like natalie's work too and i like the fact that she was kind of one of the first people saying you could do this. And, and it, it's interesting that a lot of the books that we've picked out are by women as well. Not only that, I'm very aware that three and actually four, because I haven't come to her yet, mm. four out of the five books I'm going to mention today are written by women from the Southern Hemisphere. Mm. I think I have a thing for Australian and Kiwi yes, women. <laughs> you obviously do, yeah. <laughs> but I, I suppose one of the things that I, that I see about these these women particularly, I mean, and Michael Port was somebody who at the time was very kind of out of step with the, I mean, obviously he's, he's one of the kind of the big dogs in, in the industry now, but he was somebody who kind of said, I'd had to work out how this this worked on my own because there was no model out there to, to do this because he saw stuff as, off as a coach as well. So I, I think these are, these are all women who've kind of helped to, to define this industry and is a new young industry and and you get the kind of very kind of raw tigery like men who are who who are doing it you know the the dan kennedys and the evan pagans and the the people like that and then you get the people who've come from more like the corporate world i suppose Mm -hmm. and then you have the these women who were almost kind of trailblazers and saying oh hell no you don't have to do it like that let that's (laughs) design a way that we we want to do it that works for us mm-hmm. um and i think you know a lot a lot of these women are kind of you know either corporate renegades or escapees or or hippies that have found a way of of making a living and I, you know i love that that's one of the reasons that i i love the online world because there's there's kind of room for everyone but mm-hmm. i think it's it's really cool that some of our our big hitting kind of heroines in this industry are, I suppose, kind of different and, and mm-hmm. treading their own path and saying, it's totally cool. If you are a hippie mama from Australia and you really like doodling and, you know, <laughs> worshipping the moon my god. Next book on the list. <laughs> yeah. That is fine. Yeah. You know, I'm a millionaire, let me show you how it's done type of thing. Yeah. And I, I I do think that that's that's really groovy. Yeah. So go on, I have kind of preempted your, your next book, haven't I? No, no, I, I've just gone with Natalie, so you're next. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, well, my my next one is, it, there's kind of two books, they're kind of companion books. Okay. But it's The Right Brain Business Plan and Building Your Business the Right Brain Way, who both of which are by Jennifer Lee from Artisan Coaching. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't know if you're in England as well, for, for listeners who aren't, so... Mm-hmm. When you say you want to start up a business, there is uh, certain you know forums and and services out there that will, that will help you. And one of the things that traditionally happens is you're sent along to your local chamber of commerce, which is normally paid to run a course for people thinking of starting their own businesses. And one of the things that they they ask you to do is to do your your business plan. Mm-hmm. And I was so not just clueless about a business plan; it was just like they were talking a foreign language to me. I mm-hmm. didn't, un- and they were saying, "Well, you need to predict your income." And I was saying, oh, "Well, how do I predict my income?" And they yeah. were, "Well, you just kind of make it up." So I was saying, "Well, okay." <laughs> 
okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it up, but based <laughs> on, and they'd be talking about marketing plans and I'd be going, huh? And, you know, it was mm. just, I'm sure I was the person that they all shook their head so after I left never the make room. It. Yeah, she'll never make it. And so this whole idea of business planning and that kind of having that, that kind of strategic overview of your business, I just thought that it's, it's just not me. I'm obviously a creative and I'm just going to have to wing it. And then I came across the Right Brain Business Plan by Jennifer Lee and she basically shows you how to do a business plan in a really creative way. Ooh. That suits creative. So there's lots of things around it. So she kind of translates it to us more creative autistic types. Mm-hmm. So she does all of these really cool things like, you know, you you draw out not not kind of your, your list of services or, or things like that. So so you draw a flower and on the petals are all of the the offerings that you have for your in your business for your customers. Or you you know, and ways that you're gonna make moolah. And it puts that kind of creativity and play and fun Mm -hmm. back into designing your business and how you want to. But still helps you to look at, well, how are you going to get clients in? How are you going to start attracting them to you? How are you going to go out to them? What's your message to them going to be? But translates it into a way that is creative and fun and non-scary but and totally works for people with a more kind of creative mindset and so for me it was the first book that got me thinking big picture strategy about my business and that was huge and then she she did a follow-up called building your business the right brain way which looks at things like sales funnels and Mm -hmm. you know list building and stuff like that but again takes it with this approach that you know get out your colored pencils and a big piece of paper and let's draw this stuff and so you know I, I still when I find myself getting kind of tight and anxious about kind of businessy stuff and just getting really stuck in the detail of things Mm -hmm. I still really love to go back to those books and and tap into that creative problem solving side of me Mm, excellent I like that yeah I highly recommend them and I would also recommend getting the print books oh yeah because they're beautiful and you know they're really nicely produced they're nice and colorful but there's also there's nice spaces for you to draw within your petals (laughs) and and things like that in in just a way that doesn't translate so much in the, the the kindle version yeah, excellent. Okay, well, that's a good that's a good tip, and I think it's good that we've mentioned at least for some of the books which ones kind of should be in paperback mm. and which kinds are okay to buy an ebook. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. So my next one is Leonie Dawson. So when you're talking mm-hmm. earlier about the hippie Australian woman who makes a multi million dollar business, mm. that's her. So she has these workbooks that she puts out every year. The title changes a little bit every year, but it. This year's one was create your shining year in life and create your shining year in business. So she has two separate workbooks. She sells them in digital format and printed format. And I always buy them in printed format ever since she started producing them printed because it's just so much easier than printing them yourself. And this Mm -hmm. is the kind of book that you will want to have in printed format, whether you print it yourself or buy it pre-printed. So this is a fantastic, it's very much like having kind of, it's like a coach in a workbook. So it really works you through taking a look at the previous year, looking at what worked, what didn't work, what you want to be different, what you liked, letting go of that, and then moving forward to you know the following year. So I usually do these in December. Looking at just every aspect of business and life, what kinds of things you want to do, what do you want to let go of, just all very, very detailed. And it really walks you through the goal setting process and reviewing the regular basis it's got a little bit of woo woo to it it's got a ton of practicality to it so I really love it it's all done in Leonie's gorgeous artwork full of colors and just beautiful crazy stuff so (laughs) I love it I, I just find it really it helps me focus on what I want each year and really get motivated for the new year ahead Mm. I, I I didn't get it this year. I think I got it the, the year before, but I agree. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, it, it, it reminds me very much of the, the Red Brain Business Plan uh, mm-hmm. books, the Jennifer Lee ones, and that it kind of allows you to get into that creative, colourful, yep. dreamy space, but also to kind of marry it with the thinking strategically and big picture and how you're going to implement it and, and all of that stuff. So I love Leonie Dawson. She, I love her too. I love the fact that, you know, a little bit of woo, a little bit of swearing. Yeah, bit I love of, it that she's know. 100 percent herself and she's very quirky 
mm-hmm. as a fellow Aspergerian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love people that are like weird and quirky. So um, I love that. But I just love how she allows herself to be 100% herself. And that her is very, very different from the mainstream business owner. And she's had such great success by just showing up year after year after year, doing her thing and being herself. And it attracts the right, you know, the people who are meant to be with her, it attracts them. And the people that think, what the hell is that? Mm -hmm. It repels them so that's perfect she is she is a perfect example of marmite in the business world yeah absolutely I, you know i love the fact that she's doing so well because for every time somebody goes oh i, I don't want to what people won't like me i want to kind of tone it down a little bit you yeah. kind of say you know look at Liam and Dawson. exactly and yeah it, it, yeah it's just brilliant i, I yeah i really like her Mm, excellent so what's your next book my next and final book is how the world sees you by sally hogshead and this is the kind of how to fascinate kind of test that you can you can take online so if you go to i think it's howtofascinate.com i'll just double check mm. that yeah howtofascinate.com uh you can you can buy the book there and this is about you have a lot of psychometric tests like Myers-Briggs and things Mm -hmm. like that look at how you see yourself and how you interpret the world what Sally and her team's work did uh, does is look at how the world sees you and how you can use that to your your best advantage whether that be in the workplace and she's just uh, come up with a, a second book now which is all about branding and business and personal Ooh. branding and it's great so you can do the, this test and kind of shows you the different archetypes that that you are in the different kind you know what are your real strengths and advantages and how how to play to those Ooh. So, you know, it, I think for mine, it is, I think I'm the secret weapon. So my my two kind of strongest traits, if you like, are, I think, passion, or it might be insight, I can't, remember, can't quite remember, and mystique. Ooh. So rather than kind of saying, well, you're a bit of an introvert and you're kind of hard to get to know, <laughs> what it actually mystique. says is mystique means that, you, you know, you're, what people will really benefit from you is that while you may not be the person dominating the conversation what you say is Mm. usually well thought out and at a certain depth that you know won't people won't get if they're of of a different kind of brand type and this is this is how you can use that to to stand out at work or stand out in your business and it really helps you to to place your strengths so one of the the things that kind of got me really I guess recommitting to the podcast and using my podcast as my main form of of outreach was was really stepping into this idea well you know if mystique is one of my my primary things I'm not the type of person who will show you lots of pictures of my you know on Instagram of my Mm -hmm. life because my life really isn't that interesting to me and and I have no desire to share it with with other people you know you don't want to see what sandwich I had had for lunch type thing but I don't share huge amounts of my personal Mm -hmm. life with people but I do love sharing lessons that I've learned Mm -hmm. and you know kind of theory and techniques and strategy and 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 subjects that I can get into it in more depth and that's what I love to do on my my podcast so I either you know have conversations like this with people where we can you know nerd out on on subjects or our favorite books or or whatever it might be and then I have episodes where I get to to teach people a technique or a mindset hack or, or something like that and that's because it's it really helped me to to own my my kind of character strengths in terms of how other people see me. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And so it's it, it's really good. You can do the the kind of test that goes along with the book online, and you can also I, I think there's a code that you get within the book to do that, and then it, it talks you through the different types that are in there and how to make the most of them and also how to get along best with other people who are of a, a different type to you so it's like psychometrics but almost like in a personal branding way really really good in terms of, of marketing and how how you're showing up in in the world uh, you know particularly when when building a business well, you had me at psychometric personality <laughs> test. <Sorry, what? laughs> I love those things. So <laughs> the link will be in the show notes. And of course, we'll be clicking on it the second we get off this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> 
<laughs> good stuff. Okay, so my last book is another mindset book. So it's The Big Leap, Conquer Your Hidden Fear and Take Life to the Next Level by Gay Hendricks. And this is a book that I read a couple of years ago and I really need to go through and read it again because I loved it. Just all about, you know, how fear is holding you back, how to take how to take your life to the next level, as the subtitle says. But it also talks about that upper limit problem where you create this kind of ceiling for yourself and you think, well, I just can't go beyond that. Whether it's at the conscious or subconscious level, oftentimes we do have that ceiling there and we just can't move beyond it. So fantastic book for helping you uncover your stuff and become aware when you are upper limiting you know, yourself and letting fear hold you back. Mm, I, I love that it's it's a while since I've read it as well and I was mm. just thinking the same thing I should really go back and, and and read that now this one I have an ebook format but do you have it in paperback do you feel like it's a paperback kind of book or an ebook kind of book I read it on ebook as well and it was mm. it was fine for me e- ebook yeah I think so I'm, I'm finding as I get older that I or maybe it's just as I try and squeeze more into my life I don't, I don't know but I find that I, I like listening to things a lot more as I've got older. Mm. So I'm wondering if there's an audio version of it as, as well. I'm sure there is. Yeah. That's a, it's quite a popular book when it first came out. Uh-huh. Yeah. So great. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Well, I think we've come to the end of our lists and come to the end of the show. So hope everyone found this useful. Um, I think there's just some really good resources in a variety of different kind of business and business mindset topics. So mm-hmm. great. Mm. and yeah so let us know if these are books that kind of light your fire or, or whether the you know it's an absolute travesty that we've missed <laughs> certain ones yes off, let us know, know if we've forgotten anything yeah and, sh- and share yours with us as well i really enjoyed that holly thank you good i did too <laughs> all right so thank you very much for joining us and we will be back next month with another special episode Bye. thank you have a good day Thank you for listening, and remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 151 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.